Thank you for becoming a Can-Am ATV owner and welcome to the safety video. This is a short video filled with safety information. BRP, the manufacturer of Can-Am ATVs, strongly urges you and anybody who operates this ATV to watch this video, understand the safety labels, the operator's guide, and take an approved ATV safety riding course. Failure to do so may result in serious injury or death. For safety or training information, see your Can-Am ATV dealer or call the ATV Safety Institute at 1-800-887-2887 or visit their website at www.atvsafety.org or in Canada, the Canada Safety Council at 613-739-1535, extension 233 or visit their website at www.canadasafetycouncil.org. This safety video provides a general presentation of safe riding skills. ATVs can be hazardous to operate. Riding on ATV vehicles poses certain risks like any other type of vehicle. That's why it's very important to have the skills and knowledge to be totally in control of your vehicle at all times. It is also critical to understand your vehicle's operating characteristics and limitations. This section of the DVD will cover general ATV safe riding skills that pertain to all riders, but it specifically references one-up ATV operation. Do not carry a passenger under any circumstances on a one-up ATV. Only an ATV specifically designated for two-up use can be used to carry a passenger. A second section of this DVD is provided specifically for designated two-up ATVs and it contains additional safety information specific to the operation of a two-up ATV, especially while carrying a passenger. BRP recommends that all riders ride the appropriate size ATV according to their age. Parents need to be sure young riders are mature enough to ride an ATV, receive proper training and instructions, and take an approved safety riding course. Young riders require parental permission and supervision from an adult. BRP recommends that you always follow the age requirement on the warning label affixed to the vehicle. Can-Am ATVs come in a variety of sizes and power ranges. Your dealer can help you choose a model that is right for you. But be aware that nobody at any age should ride an ATV if they are not responsible enough to ride properly. Safe operation also requires having an awareness of the hazards that you can encounter while riding and taking action to avoid those hazards. Remember, certain dangers and risks involved with the operation of an ATV can result in serious injury or death. Always avoid paved surfaces. Riding on paved surfaces may seriously affect handling and control of the vehicle and may cause a sudden loss of control. If you must drive on pavement, turn gradually and go slowly. This vehicle is not intended for public road usage. Never operate on public roads. You can collide with another vehicle. The best place to ride your Can-Am ATV is on loose, soft, packed, unpaved surfaces. On low grip surfaces like snow, the steering responses are not as crisp and precise. Stopping distances are lengthened and acceleration becomes sluggish. Even when not required to reduce vehicle speed, apply brake frequently to prevent ice or snow accumulation and to dry brake pads and disc. Never operate at excessive speeds for the terrain, visibility, your abilities, or experience level. Never do wheelies, jumps, or stunts. You must avoid anything that impairs your own abilities, such as alcohol, drugs, and fatigue. Drinking and driving don't mix. You know it. Don't ever do it. Close behind alcohol is drug use. Even prescription drugs and over-the-counter medications for colds, flu, allergies, or headaches make you drowsy, slow your reaction time, and limit your ability to ride safely. Remember, be ready, be alert, and never ride beyond your ability. Another key way to reduce your exposure to risk is by carefully planning and preparing. By thinking ahead, you can often avoid situations that may be beyond your skill level 
Preparing to ride your vehicle means that you perform regular maintenance to keep it in good working condition and inspect it before every ride as outlined in your operator's guide. Finally, every time you go out for a ride, you accept inherent risks, such as those arising from terrain conditions and weather. But you can reduce your exposure to these risks by using good judgment, skills, and vigilance while operating your vehicle. In case of trouble, it's a good idea to carry the toolkit provided with your vehicle and a first aid kit. You need to become familiar with all the operating systems and the controls on your machine. Before driving your ATV, you must locate and understand the functionality of all the controls found on your ATV. We recommend taking a moment, referring to your operator's guide when seated on your machine to learn where to find the controls and how they work. You must be able to use them properly when needed. Keep the operator's guide handy in case you need to refer to it when you are out riding. Your vehicle may come with two different ignition keys. The normal gray key limits the performance of your vehicle. This may be useful for riders who prefer less performance. We recommend giving this key to a less experienced operator who wants to drive the vehicle. The performance black key gives full access to engine performance. Riding an open-air vehicle like your Can-Am ATV requires wearing proper protective gear. Protective gear helps you stay comfortable and can help provide protection against the elements. Recommended basic protective gear includes a long sleeve shirt or jacket and long pants that protect you from sunburn, cold temperatures, branches and bushes. Sturdy over the ankle footwear with non-slip sole. Full fingered gloves that protect you against wind, sun, cold, heat and flying objects. Above all, an approved helmet with proper eye protection that protects your head and brain against injury and protects your eyes against flying elements. On long rides, it's a good idea to carry rain gear. A dry rider will be much more comfortable and alert than a rider who is wet and cold. Before you go out for a ride, it's very important to familiarize yourself with the handling of your vehicle by practicing in a controlled setting. Take a more formal training course to sharpen your skills and increase your knowledge. A safety class is the best place to learn the proper riding techniques. Every rider should take an ATV safety class, as mentioned previously in this video. Perform a pre-ride inspection before each ride to detect any potential problems that could occur during operation. The pre-ride inspection can help you monitor component wear and deterioration before they become a problem. Correct any problems that you discover. See an authorized Can-Am dealer if necessary. We suggest that you start by looking at tire condition. Next, check the tire pressure using the pressure gauge provided with your vehicle. Refer to the safety label affixed on the vehicle to find out what the recommended pressure is. Next, do a quick visual check for damage to the wheels and lug nuts. You should twist each wheel lug nut by hand to be sure nothing is loose. Look underneath your vehicle and check for any signs of fluids on the ground which would indicate a leak somewhere. Check also for any objects like grass, leaves and sticks caught in the suspension arms, shock springs or fenders and clear any debris from the chassis before riding. Check drive shaft boots and protector condition. Fix any binding, restrictions, free play or looseness in the steering before you ride. Check that the seat and storage box are properly latched and that cargo is properly loaded and secured. Make sure that you do not exceed the maximum cargo weight of your vehicle. If you are hauling a trailer, you must also verify that it is securely attached to your vehicle and that the tongue weight and the load to carry are not over limit. Check the brakes. Verify each of the brake commands of your ATV. If they feel soft or spongy, they could be low on fluids or have a leak. Check the brake lever lock to make sure that it locks the handbrake lever in the braking position. Try pushing the vehicle with the handbrake locked. 
you shouldn't be able to move the vehicle unless you release the brake lever lock. Check that the throttle has a free and smooth range of motion. A sticky throttle is a dangerous condition that must be fixed before you ride. Now, insert your ignition key and turn to the position so the lights come on. Check that the multifunction gauges cluster is powered and self-testing. Check operation of the indicator lamps. Now, walk around your vehicle by checking the functionality and cleanliness of the headlights, tail lights, and reflectors. Go back to your controls and press on the high low beam switch and check that the headlights are still working properly. Check also the rear brake light when you apply the brake. Now it's time to put on your helmet and the rest of your riding gear and prepare to start the engine. First, apply the brakes and put the shift lever to the park or neutral position for some vehicles. Move the emergency stop switch to run. Now press the start button to start the engine and check the fuel level and see if any special messages appear in the cluster. Move the emergency stop switch to the stop position to verify if the engine will shut down. Restart the engine. Do the same by turning off the key. Then restart the engine. Verify that your steering operates freely by turning the handlebar in both directions several times. Now finally, drive forward a small distance to verify that everything is moving freely and normally. Then apply all brakes individually to make sure the vehicle will stop adequately. Every rider must know his or her riding skill limitations and must practice safe driving techniques. Off-road riding requires active riding skills, meaning you have to actively shift your weight while riding. Depending on the terrain, you'll be leaning forward, backwards, and side to side to better control the vehicle. Repeat the maneuvers learned in the training course. Begin with the easier maneuvers first until you can perform all of them safely every time. Never do wheelies, jumps, or stunts. Turning is one of the most frequent causes of accidents. It's easier for the vehicle to lose traction or roll over if you turn too sharp or are going too fast. Slow down when you approach a turn. You should shift your weight into the turn and accelerate only after you start coming out of the turn. The best way to shift your weight for turning is to move forward slightly and slide over to the side of the seat that is on the inside of the turn. Support your body weight on the inside footrest and lean into the turn. Pay attention to the vehicle. If the wheels start to slide or come off the ground, you need to slow down or make a wider turn. The sharper and quicker you turn, the more you must shift your weight, lean in, and slow down. Ride alert. Be aware of possible hidden dangers when riding over unfamiliar terrain. Never ride at speeds that are too fast for the terrain, visibility, or your experience. Be aware that sand, snow, ice, and water affect traction and ride characteristics. If you start to skid or slide, slow down and turn your handlebars into the direction of the slide. Keep your weight forward and don't apply the brakes until you're out of the slide. If the vehicle slides straight ahead when you want to turn, slow down and move forward on the seat. Lean to the inside of the turn and turn the handlebars. Crossing obstacles like logs, rocks and ruts is risky and should be avoided as much as possible. Your vehicle will respond differently to different obstacles, so be extra careful in these situations. Keep your speed slow, approach the obstacles and stand up with your weight forward. Apply a little throttle when the tires touch the obstacle and release the throttle when the front tires clear the obstacle. If only one tire will contact the obstacle, don't apply the throttle. Let the momentum of the vehicle carry you over the obstacle. Keep your body loose to absorb any shocks from the terrain. If the vehicle starts to tip, Shift your weight to keep it in balance. Never cross water deeper than the footrests unless the vehicle is designed to be used in deeper water. 
Injury and engine damage can result from crossing deeper water. Also, the tires are very buoyant and can cause the vehicle to float. This is especially dangerous in fast-moving currents. Before crossing any water, know the depth of the water by stopping the ATV and physically checking its depth. And be on your guard for any obstacles in the water that may be hidden from view. Go slow and make sure you have a safe way out of the water on the other side. Once you clear the water, briefly apply the brakes to make sure they dry out and work properly. Try to avoid steep inclines. If you're not careful, you could tip over when you're going up or down hills. Before trying to climb a hill, keep these things in mind. Hill climbing should only be attempted by experienced operators. Start on shallow slopes. Some hills are too steep to safely stop or recover after an unsuccessful climbing attempt. When you're going uphill, you should drive straight uphill. Keep your feet firmly on the footrest with your body weight forward. Shift your ATV to lower gear and accelerate before you start to climb. Try to keep a steady speed and go easy on the throttle to avoid acceleration. Abrupt slope or terrain variation or rolling one wheel over an obstacle could have a big impact on the stability as it will lift the front of the vehicle increasing the risk of tipping over. Be prepared to dismount quickly if necessary. If you stall while riding uphill, lock the brakes, stop the engine and dismount on the uphill side. Don't back down on hills. Turn around and come back down by using the K-turn maneuver. Keep your body weight forward and get off the vehicle on the uphill side. Turn the handlebars all the way towards you so you will be on the inside of the turn. Partially release the brake and let the vehicle roll back around slowly until it's facing slightly downhill. Reapply the brakes. Get on the vehicle from the uphill side. Keep your body weight shifted back uphill as you sit down. Then carefully ride down the hill, keeping your weight shifted uphill. When going downhill, you should ride straight downhill. Move your body to the back of the seat, slow down, and apply your brakes slightly. Never coast downhill with the ATV in neutral. Side hilling your ATV is one of the most dangerous types of riding and should be avoided if possible. If you cannot avoid riding on the side of the hill, slow down, lean into the hill, transferring your body weight towards the hill while keeping your feet on the footrests. If the vehicle feels like it's going to tip, turn downhill. If that's not possible, then stop and carefully get off on the uphill side of the ATV. Carefully turn the ATV downhill before getting on and riding down. Crossing roads is another dangerous situation. Be alert. Before crossing, completely stop on the shoulder of the road and check both directions for traffic. If you are near a blind corner or intersection, move to a safer crossing. Ride the shortest distance straight across to the opposite shoulder. Use sound judgment. Check local laws. In some places, it's illegal to cross roads. Normally, coming to a stop should be slow and easy, allowing plenty of time and distance for the ATV to stop. Sometimes quick stops are necessary, and you should always be prepared to apply the brakes immediately. Whether you are stopping slowly or you need to stop quickly, release the throttle and apply the front and rear brakes evenly at the same time. If the wheels lock, release the brakes briefly and then reapply again. Cargo weight, towing a trailer, changes the handling and braking distance of the vehicle. Limit the loads you carry or tow up to the recommended capacity that the machine was designed to handle. Check the load specifications in the operator's guide. Never exceed the vehicle's load capacity. Respect the environment you ride in. Find out where the designated ATV trails are. If you are not sure, contact your local Can-Am ATV dealer, your local ATV club, 
or call your municipal or county government offices for more information. On the trails, keep yourself visible to others by using your headlights and taillights. Give yourself plenty of room to stop or maneuver your vehicle, especially for unanticipated conditions. When you need to stop, pull completely off the trail and pay attention to the signs that indicate who may be on the trail. Leave a lot of space between you and others on the trail. Respect the rights of hikers, horseback riders, bikers, and animals in the area. And respect private property and sensitive areas. Above all, stay on the trail. Remember, as an ATV rider, you represent the sport of ATV riding to other riders, and non-riders too. Staying on designated trails is the best way to keep the trails open for you and everybody else. This section of the DVD has provided a general presentation of safe ATV riding skills for a single rider operation without a passenger. All ATVs are for one rider only and designated accordingly, unless specifically designed and designated for two rider use. Double riding may impair the ability of the operator to shift weight going uphill, downhill, and around corners on an ATV not intended for two rider use. Never operate at any time with a passenger on any ATV unless it is specifically designed and designated as a two-up ATV. This second section contains additional safety information specific for and to the operation of a two-up ATV especially while carrying a passenger. It's important you review and understand the information in this DVD and in the operator's guide before operating your Can-Am 2-Up ATV, especially with a passenger. It's just as important that any person who may become a passenger on your 2-Up ATV watch this section carefully and reviews the safety labels to better understand and appreciate the safest way to be a participant in the 2-Up ride. BRP reminds you that as the operator, you are at all times responsible for your safety and the safety of your passenger. Your 2-Up ATV has been specially designed for carrying one operator and one passenger. Its wheelbase is longer than a regular 1-Up ATV, allowing both you and your passenger to sit forward of the rear axle. For optimized weight distribution, your passenger is positioned on a seat that is slightly raised for better forward viewing. Your passenger also has raised passenger footboards, handholds, and a backrest. All of these features permit the passenger to better anticipate and react to trail conditions and potential upcoming obstacles. There are a few important rules to cover before you operate your new 2-Up ATV. The first is to respect the ATV age limitations. In order to drive your Can-Am 2-Up ATV, you must be 16 years of age or older. Your passenger has to be capable of sitting upright while firmly placing his or her feet on the footboards and properly reach the passenger handholds to stay correctly positioned for proactive riding. The passenger must not ride after consuming drugs or alcohol. If any potential passenger is not capable of doing this properly, you should not permit them to ride as a passenger on your 2-Up ATV. As the operator, it is up to you to assess the suitability of your passenger. Even though a person may be capable of doing this for becoming a passenger on your 2-Up ATV, he or she may not have the skills, abilities, or the judgment needed to ride as a passenger on your 2-Up ATV. You must also be sure that the passenger is well informed about the basic safe riding procedures and tips by making sure he or she reads the safety labels and watches this safety video before going for a ride as a passenger. As the operator of your 2-Up ATV, you are always responsible for the safety of the passenger. If you're a novice or an untrained operator, you should not carry a passenger until you have sufficient experience in operating your 2-Up ATV. To ensure the safe handling, stability and braking of your 2-Up ATV, you must verify that the combined weight of yourself, 
your passenger, and all other loads, and added accessories, does not exceed the stated safe load capacity for your two-up ATV. Exceeding the safe load capacity while riding can be very dangerous to you and your passenger. You must make sure that you and your passenger are properly protected with suitable safety gear during the ride. This equipment includes an approved helmet, eye protection, long pants, and boots with ankle protection, a long sleeve shirt or jacket, and gloves. The passenger should have an approved helmet including a chin guard as an added protection should the operator's helmet make contact with the passenger. It is important for you to learn how to operate your two-up ATV safely in different types of terrain and conditions, both with and without a passenger. You should practice the maneuvers shown in both sections on this DVD and in the accompanying operator's guide and practice in easy, familiar terrain. Start without a passenger until you are confident that you can fulfill your responsibilities as a safe and responsible operator. Never carry more than one passenger on a two-up ATV. Carrying more than one passenger may affect the balance and steering and increase the risk of losing control. This could result in severe injury, including death. Your passenger should always keep his or her hands and feet inside the width of the vehicle and place them on the handholds and footrests provided. Make sure the passenger is alert and always looks ahead, leans into curves, and braces for bumps. The passenger should not hold on to the operator so as to limit the operator's movements and ability to safely operate the two-up ATV. You need to be aware that the additional weight of a passenger can change the handling, stability, and braking distance of your two-up ATV. You should accommodate these changes by operating your two-up ATV at slower speeds, by allowing a greater distance for stopping, by not riding aggressively, by avoiding difficult terrain, and by generally increasing your level of care, caution, and control as an operator. Never attempt any risky maneuvers on your vehicle, especially with a passenger. Remember that your passenger may not be as skilled or familiar with your two-up ATV as you are, so be extra careful when riding with a passenger. It is likely your passenger will react more slowly than you and thus may not be as well prepared for the maneuver as you might be. By exercising extra care, caution and control, you can help ensure that your passenger has adequate time to react and protect him or herself if necessary. Since any sudden or large movement by your passenger could affect the safe operation of your two-up ATV, the passenger must always consider all vehicle and operator motions for upcoming terrain before moving and then do so gradually with a minimal switching of weight. The passenger must be very careful to avoid making any excessive or unexpected moves that could cause you to lose control. The passenger should never get up during the operation of the two-up ATV under any circumstances. As the operator, you also have to be aware that backing up may be more difficult while carrying a passenger, since the passenger may block your view to the rear. For greater safety, you should consider asking the passenger to dismount if you are backing up. Before you embark or disembark the passenger, make sure that you stop the ATV. If you encounter an obstacle, follow the procedures outlined in the first section of this DVD and covered in detail in the operator's guide. You must judge whether or not the passenger should remain on board before you proceed to cross the obstacle. Always remember that you have a passenger on board and that you are responsible for his or her safety. When in doubt about your ability to safely continue riding with a passenger on board your two-up ATV, if you judge that the situation is unsafe, always disembark the passenger before proceeding. Proceed without the passenger on board until you judge it to be safe for the passenger to remount. Exercising caution is strongly recommended when you are ascending, descending, or crossing the side of the hill, or when traversing an obstacle. 
Always keep in mind that in some situations, this two-up ATV can be safely used by the operator alone, but not necessarily with the passenger on board. When you need to cross climb or cross a side hill, always remember to keep the operator's and passenger's weight uphill. If you judge that the situation is unsafe, apply the brakes and stop. Apply the parking brake. First disembark the passenger, then yourself on the uphill side. Riding with a passenger on board can be a pleasurable, comfortable and safe experience for both of you. But as mentioned in this video, riding with a passenger may also differ from riding alone as the handling, stability and braking of your vehicle can change. So be responsible and be even more aware. When riding with a passenger, you must operate your two-up ATV with extra care, caution and control. This concludes our review of the important safety information that you need to know before enjoying your Can-Am ATV. Thank you for your time.